Okay, let me welcome to the show. She is amazing because not only is she talented and brilliant in all of the things, but she cares about humanity and she puts it in her work. Let me welcome one of the co-directors of The Big Payback and also, of course, the proprietor of Color Farm Media, which produces the great Erica Alexander. Thank you so much, Karen. It's always good to see you. You are family, sister, all of that. Mentor. She's talking about a great connector, River to her people. And Omi, it's my girl. I'm so glad to see you. Putting us all financially in good health and and humming with the the entrepreneur set. You ain't no joke. You're no joke. I always appreciate you. Glad to see you. I never know who know who who people the people know the people right, mm-hmm. but I but we have to assume without the ass being in there that we are all in the good in the good realm. We all know each other. Yeah. So this is this is be- this is of course a, all right. So before we get into this, I want to know how you two got together. I'm gonna start with Mr. Whitney, um, mm-hmm. to to do this. Were you already on this road, and then Erica came in, or what was the process? Well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been making films about, you know, race and identity for a couple of decades. And um, one of my one of my friends who I used to do commentary on her shows, Joy Reid, and uh, we were talking about doing some projects and we we're talking about things we're interested in. And pretty much all my work has led me to this point. It all ends up at reparations, Karen. It all like whatever discussion you have about at race, if you do it, if you have that conversation long enough, it lands on reparations. If we want to actually repair the 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 the, the damage that, uh, you know, that 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 have been done to black Americans. She said, oh, reparations, you got to talk to my friend, Eric Alexander and Ben Arnon. And I said, really? And she said, yes, really. So we uh, so she introduced us and she's actually an executive producer of the film. And we we really hit it off and started talking. Erica can talk a little bit about her interest in reparations. And, you know, I feel we feel strong. I think Erica agrees with me that this is not should not be a black film. It should not be a white film. This is about a relationship that needs to be repaired. White people created the injury. Create people need to be responsible for 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 fixing it. And so uh, we decided to make this film together. Why, why do you know this, Whitney Dow? Um, I don't know what your background is in terms of uh, your uh, experience in America, your people, where they're from, but you look melanemic to me, you don't seem to have a whole lot of melanin. So as a person without a whole lot of melanin, usually we, you know, th- I hear this. Well, my people didn't own anybody. My people came in through Ellis Island. I didn't have anything to do with slavery. That was 200 years ago. As a matter of fact, we have a clip um, from your film, ta Coates is, you know, testifying. You know, and the play play the clip, Smith. Sure. Yesterday, when asked about reparations, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell offered a familiar reply. Yeah, I, I don't think reparations for something that happened 150 years ago, for whom none of us currently living are responsible, is a good idea. Okay, so this is the response we get frequently. Why? Why did? Why did you care? Ooh. Why do? Why do I care? Um, because, you know, look, I, I, both Eric and I came at some new things. I care about my community, the white community. And I feel like the white community is, has, is suffering from a different type of wound, but a very, very deep wound. When you've wronged somebody, when you participated in something that you know is immoral, you can't actually live your life in a fully human way until you make good on that injury. And I know for myself and the work that I've done, it wasn't until I recognized that my whiteness was this like active dynamic component of my life. It wasn't this like passive thing that was sort of, I sort of was like working around because I was a good person, but it was driving things. And once I realized that I could actually take, take action that would change the dynamic it was this like this huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. And, you know, I, I'm corny in the way is that I, you know, I, I, I'm an American. I want the best for America. I want us to, um, I want my community to be strong. I want my, uh, my neighbors to be strong. And I really felt like this, that, in, that so many of the divisions that we are living with now flow from this original injury, this original division. And until we repair that original injury, we can't repair anything else. So, and just to the response to Mitch McConnell, I think people are thinking about the wrong way. They think, oh, let's talk about the, it was all in the past. Forget about the past. Let's look at today. 
Can anybody deny that there are injuries and, and issues today? They flowed from the past. Let's not talk about trying to fix something that happened before. Let's fix something that we all can agree is happening right now. And if we do that, we'll come out as a stronger community on the backside. Mm. I have so many questions for you, Whitney Dow. Um, <laughs> Erica E., Erica Alexander, um, for you coming in to this, why the focus on Evanston? We have right now reparations discussion happening in California. There's a task force there to create state legislation. Uh, they're, they're, they just have a proposal on the table. Um, $360,000 per person uh, is what they're looking at. And Rhode Island, they, they have a housing program, no dollar amount, no money per se, but white poor people can actually apply for reparations in Rhode Island, which I knew I was like, this is going to be problematic. It's going to be just like affirmative action for you. Evanston, Illinois was what? What was so impactful about their their move? Well, Karen, and thanks for having us on today. Um, oh, we were excuse. having this conversation uh, in the space of like the 13th, uh, the movie, the 13th from the 13th Amendment that Ava DuVernay did, which was talking heads and sort of giving a history of uh, not only slavery, but how reparations comes into play and who um, who are the movement leaders and all that. And then we heard from uh, one of our producers, Zan Parker, about an actual reparations bill that had passed in Evanston, Illinois. So we got there and filmed uh, that night and you'll see that in the film, but you'll see that this film follows the historic story of Alder woman, Robin Ruth Simmons, who passed the first tax funded reparations bill for black residents in Evanston and Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, who is trying to advance HR 40, which is a study of reparations in Congress and has been there since John Conyers introduced it 30 years ago. And instead of talking about something that is or wants or to be or isn't, we actually could talk about something that is. We were following history. So it was like being invited to watch um, Rosa Parks um, during the, the bus uh, uh, boycott. And the opportunity to follow history and to somebody who had figured out a way to do it with a mostly white council was what the film became. So that's what the film became and that's why Evanston matters. And it's a groundbreaking local bill in Evanston that set off all the bills that you're talking about as the first tax funded reparations bill in American history. Now, the first phase of that involves 16 residents. So some people are like all of this for 16 people. It's, it's a phase, y'all. Twenty five thousand dollars each uh, for home repair, property costs. This plan, uh, of course, is far from over. This is just phase one. Uh, the housing program's first initiative in this historic plan is to distribute uh, 10 million in reparations to black residents in Evanston. Um and is to directly acknowledge and address the historical harm to to Mr. Dow's point. The acknowledgement is important. You know, sometimes in relationships, all you want is somebody to tell you that they apologize. For sure. Without yeah. conditions, because there's never without been, no bet, no but apology right. without conditions. There's <laughs> never been there. They always said, and you can't use this for reparations or you can't use this to hold us. And I said, no, we're sorry. We acknowledge the harm and the hurt. And by the way, there are $10 million more that goes into that fund from an estate tax that they found. That was from cannabis that they got the first monies because no one had taxed uh, cannabis. And so that's where they got the money. They got it before it was assigned somewhere else. And then uh, the clergy inside the area raised another million. So people are giving to the funds. So it's growing, but sorry. No, no, I mean, because it all it takes people, you know, uh, somebody to take a stand, which which actually happened. You know, some people we always wait for the magical dust to fall from the sky, but we don't look in the mirror to to actually pick up our mats and go out there and get stuff done. If you think you need it. Right. 